Hello everyone, um, this is Dwayne Kellum again. Uh, this is my 10th launch and I uh, got some um, interesting information I want to uh, pass on to y'all. This video is going to be a little short because uh, a lot of the footage, it really didn't make any sense to put it up on the uh, uh, YouTube because it was mostly filtered out sun and uh, I just wanted to use this light to learn how to uh, get the best shots for the solar eclipse. And uh, the lesson that I learned was uh, a gimbal is going to be the way to go. So a couple weeks back I ordered one. It came in. I've been working with it and i gotten it down. I, I've learned how to use it and uh, I will be using it for the solar eclipse and um, I will say that the gimbal I should have been using this a long time ago <laughs> um, I wish I had known about it around the uh, first launch but oh well okay so um, I will be able to keep the Sun in the frame for the entire solar eclipse flight going up now, I'm not sure coming down because uh, when when the balloon pops it's going to send that capsule into a spin and uh, well, well we'll just keep our fingers crossed on that alright now I'm going to put five cameras on this new on this next uh, solar eclipse launch so even if I uh, don't get any sh good shots with the gimbal which I don't think that's going to be the case I'm going to have uh, four other cameras on the on the uh, payload. I'm going to have two facing up, one with a solar filter and one without. I'm going to have one uh, facing down to the ground and it's going to be uh, to catch the shadow of the, the from the moon on the sun or whatever is up there and I uh, hope to get some good shots of that. Then I'm going to have my Garmin facing on the uh, si out on the side and uh, see and then I'm going to have that one hero uh, in the gimbal. I put a tail fan on uh, this launch. Uh, it was similar to the one I used in Balloon 1. It uh, stabilized the capsule somewhat, but I think um, I will be removing it for the solar eclipse launch. One, the capsule is already heavy with uh, the added equipment, and uh, it also when the balloon burst at the uh, burst altitude, it seems like that fin puts the capsule in too, too much of a spin and by me um, putting a gimbal on the Eclipse launch I don't want to take any chances of it slinging it off so I'm going to take the fin off on the Eclipse launch but for this launch it worked okay um, and if I send another one up where I don't have the gimbal on it I may put that tail fin back on because it does kind of, you know, stabilizes it a little bit. My spot tracker gave me some tracks uh, for the uh, the flight, and uh, it was in line right with uh, the balloon planning software that I used. And the balloon touched down in an almond field or an orchard. And uh, the the thing about that was <laughs> it landed in the orchard but it missed trees. It landed right in the middle between two rows of trees. I thought that was pretty lucky. Um, the 
the what do you call it the parachute it did kind of catch one of the trees but it was just laying on it it wasn't really snagged or anything it was something to see anyway I'll put some of those pictures on the end of this uh, slideshow too and uh, let's see I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on some of the, the footage that I got from that launch uh, of the Sun uh, at different altitudes This is the gimbal update I made on the uh, capsule after the uh, launch was completed. The video from this uh, launch was uh, pretty erratic and so uh, just wanted to give y'all a little warning on this. I used a 7.2 millimeter lens uh, for this launch and uh, it's got a little too much zoom and it's kind of hard to keep the uh, sun in the frame so for the Eclipse launch I'm going to be installing a 4.35 millimeter lens and it's a little wider and so I should be able to keep the sun in a little easier and uh, after the uh, launch is complete, I could just uh, use the computer software to zoom in if I, would, if I need to.